factor. Okay. Many people will not, and they may even make it through this whole course and not see it. So what you could do is this. I don't know why I use the letter R, but it's a letter that I typically use. Let's change this so that the 2x plus 5 is R. If you don't need to, you don't have to. Okay. If I do that, then this becomes r squared minus 3r minus 40. And everybody should know how to factor that. Right? Notice, by the way, there's no equal 0. We're not trying to solve an equation. We're just factoring. So this would be very simple to factor. You would have r and r. And you're looking now for two numbers which multiply to give negative 40 and add to give 3. Negative 3. I'm, I'm thinking negative 8 and 5 would do it. Are we okay with that? Okay, but now we have to give our heads a shake because that wasn't the question. There was no R. We put R there to help us wrap our heads around what's going on. Let's put that 2x plus 5 back in there. So now we have 2x plus 5 plus 5 and 2x plus 5 minus 8. Um, before we go on, how many of you would have been able to structure those factors this way just by looking up here? And it's not, it's not going to be too many yet. But the next time I ask that, I'm hoping it's a few more. The idea is you have this thing squared, so you need to have it here and here. If you FOIL this out, you're going to get five of those things, and you're going to get negative eight of those things, which means you'll have negative three of them, which is what we have up here. Yes, Seamus? Yes, some of you might benefit. That's actually a really good idea. Let me get rid of my green work here. Some of you might benefit, and I'm going to use a different color here, by Bless you. By doing this, you don't need square brackets. I just like if I have brackets, brackets, I like them to be square someplace. So now let's clean this up. I personally don't like them. To me, it, it makes things more cluttered visually to me. But if you want to put them, you can. Okay. Now we can clean things up because I have 2x plus 5 plus 5. Well, that's 2x plus 10. Yeah. No. Because so the question is, would you technically have to put the brackets? And the answer is no, because when you are adding or subtracting a single term, from a group of terms, brackets are not required. If I, if, let me give you a better example here. If I tell you that you're going to take 2 plus 8, uh, that's a thing, and you're going to subtract 3, does it matter if you take 2 plus 8 first to get 10 and then subtract 3 to get 7? Or... If you were to go, I don't know, 8 minus 3 is 5, 2 plus 5 is 7, it's not going to matter. You need brackets. There's one time where you always need brackets, and that is when you're subtracting many terms being added or subtracted together from something else. That being said, Ariana, I have made this point to you guys before with I think with negative bases and exponents, that you can never, I was going to say you can never have too many brackets, but I think you can. I think it can get confusing. Adding brackets 
sometimes it's necessary, sometimes it's not. So if you are more comfortable just saying, you know what, I'm going to put them because I'm not sure whether it's going to make a difference or not, go ahead. Is that okay? All right. Um, once again, I am going to choose not to have them. I'm being honest with you here that I believe as a teacher, in this question, more students will find the brackets confusing than not. That's my opinion. Okay. But now looking inside of my first factor, which is 2x plus 5 plus 5, I can simplify that to 2x plus 10. Because 5 plus 5 is 10. Over here, I can simplify this to 2x minus 3. And here's a weird thing. We're asked to factor this completely. And we can continue factoring now. Because 2x plus 10 has a common factor of 2 in it. And you can't see that common factor of 2 up here. It's buried inside of here somehow. You can't tell there's a common factor of 2. But the fact of the matter remains, 2x plus 10 is divisible by 2 with both terms without remainder. I can factor a 2 out and have x plus 5, 2x minus 3. What is the point of this? Primarily, it's to get you better algebra skills. This is not a huge, huge math 20-1 thing that we're going to build on. It's getting students to think about algebra and do better at it. So that's the factored form. We are not solving this. It's not equal to 0. Let's try one more. 5 times 3x minus 2 quantity squared minus 5 times 3x minus 2 minus 100. Well, if if you were going to let r equal 3x minus 2, then this beast would become 5r squared minus 5r minus 100. And what I am going to do for all of these is teach to everyone, which means I'm going to be doing that substitution. If you feel you don't have to do that substitution and replace the 3x minus 2 with R or some other letter, do it on your own. Okay? And I think there might be a couple of you that can. For example, how many of you saw that there was a common factor of 5 before I did this thing? So you might have just taken the 5 out and gone from there. Um, I'm going to take the 5 out and be left with R squared minus R minus 20. Yeah, the baby staring off into space doesn't know what's going on. It'd be very easy to steal candy from them at this point. We can factor this, right? It's easy. So this is 5 times r, I guess, minus 5, and r plus 4. How did I do on that? Yeah. But again, we have to kind of wake up to reality here that that r was an invention to make this easier on the eyes. I'm going to put 3x plus 2 back in for r, and I will have 3x plus. It's actually 3x minus 2. I misspoke. Then minus 5. Then I have 3x minus 2 plus 4. And then you simplify what's inside of the sets of brackets. So I have in the first set of brackets 3x minus 2 and then minus 5. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. In the second set of brackets, I have 3x minus 2 plus 4. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Uh, I know I had that eyeball from last time. Now what you want to do is eyeball everything and see if you can factor something out. Like, can you we factor something out of 3x minus 7? No. There's no common factor. And there's also no common factor here. Oh, 
Holy smokes. X to the 4 minus 13x squared plus 36. Well, x to the 4 is x squared squared. Negative 13x is negative 13x squared to the 1. And I want to point out something to you now. We can even put a 1 here. I'm not going to use the letter x in my explanation. But you know that this is quadratic, don't you? What makes it quadratic is this. And this is very subtle. And I hope most of you get it. This first term has variables that are arrived at by taking something squaring it, p. The second set of variables in the middle term, this is what's important, has an exponent that's half of the exponent in the first. If you take a look at this, this has an exponent of 4 in the first term, and the middle term has an exponent of 2, which is half of 4. That makes it quadratic, because I can write it as, let's do our let thing, let r equal x squared. What does this become? It becomes r squared minus 13r plus 36. It's not x squared minus 13x. It's x squared squared minus 13x squared. The thing that is being squared in the first term and the thing that is being multiplied by negative 13 in the second term is not x, it's x squared. And I'm going to come back to that idea in a second. We can factor this into, let's see, better be minus and minus because they have to multiply to give positive 36. I guess 4 and 9. Okay, But again, you give your head a shake. You go, well, no, there was no, there was no r. It was x squared. So I'm going to replace the r with x squared. Now, I have a question, and I just, I'm asking this not because I hope everybody puts up their hands. I know they won't. I'm asking it to learn more about students in the class. How many of you would have just done that? Okay. Now, now you're when I asked that kind of question earlier, it was a different example and I saw four or five hands go up, I believe I said to you, my hope is that the next time I ask a similar question, more hands go up. Those people that just put their hands up, that tells me you don't need to do all this middle stuff. Not in this case. Okay, so are we done? Why not, Jeff? What can we do here? I can't hear you. Well, you mean multiply it out? If we multiply it out, we're just going to go back to the original question, and we will not have done anything. Yeah, Luke? How? Sorry, say it again. No, because x squared is not divisible by 2. Say again. We're not solving an equation, though. I think what you're saying is if this were equal to 0, then we would start saying x squared equals 4. And, and that's, that's not where I want to go with this. I'm, I'm saying, is this factored completely? Brody? Uh, still the difference yeah. x squared minus 4 is a difference of squares. Now, you never would have seen that to begin with, but x squared minus 4 is 
x squared minus 2 squared. So it factors into x plus 2, x minus 2. And it just so happens x squared minus 9 is also a difference of squares. And now we're done. So this is, goes to what I was telling you earlier, where just because you factored everything, and you might have started off by saying, well, is there a common factor? No. But then you factor, you might reach a point where there is a common factor that was hidden. Or was the original question a difference of squares? No, but when you factor it, you get differences of squares. Well, there's a common factor of 2. We can start there. I would go so far as to tell you you should always be looking for a common factor of 2. Huh. You're not always looking for a common factor of 2. You should always be looking for a common factor, is what I meant. And in this case, it's 2, so I can take the 2 out. Let's see. Are there 2? Are there well, how many of you feel you could finish this problem without changing it, meaning the expression, to include r? Okay, so while I'm doing it on the board by using r, you people can give it a crack. Okay? So what I'm going to do is let x squared equal r. That means this becomes 2 times r squared. I mean, you really have to think about this. r is x squared. So x to the 4 is x squared squared. And x to the 4 is x squared squared, which means it's r squared because r is x squared. Whew. That's confusing confusing for me to say it and I know what I'm talking about uh, this would be minus 5r minus 24 so it's going to be r and r I'm thinking negative 8 and positive 3 are the two mystical numbers that will work here they multiply to give negative 84 they add to give negative 5 and then you throw the x to the 4 back in. Nope. You throw the x squared back in. So those of you that did not need to use the r, would have done that. Am I right? So how many of you successfully, I mean, I know a lot of you said, oh, I would just do it without the R. How many of you were successful? That's good. That's like at least three quarters of you. Uh, e Oof. to the six, where will it ever end? Well, this is kind of it in terms of exponents. I can take out a two. There's a common factor. It's probably a good idea to take out a 2. So is this expression in brackets quadratic? Yes. It's quadratic, and, and I said I would come back to this, and now I am, because the first term has an exponent that's even, and the middle term has an exponent that's half of the exponent of the first term. And the exponent on the variable in the last term is 0. There is no variable. 
why is that important? It's important because this can be written as n cubed squared. Just one second. Okay. And this can be written as 4 times n cubed. And this can be written as minus 21. So in the previous examples, we were putting x squared and x squared because they had to multiply to give x to the 4. I'm going to push it here and not use r just to begin with and say to you, look, if you wanted to factor what's in this large set of brackets, doesn't it make sense that you would have to have n cubed and n cubed? Because when you multiply n cubed times n cubed, you get n to the 6. And if you have numbers here and here, your outer and inner terms will be n cubed. And that's what we want. We want n cubed. So I'm, I'm kind of doing it without r, and then I'll do it with the r. So what two numbers multiply to give negative 21 and add to give four would be negative three and seven. Am I right? So I, I, before I do the r thing, I want to really push this here. I hope everybody sees that you're going to get n to the six because you'll add these two exponents together to get 6. And your outer will contain an n cubed, and your inner will contain n cubed. That's why the exponent on the variable for the middle term has to be half of the exponent on the first term. Now, if you wanted to do this one with r, And again, I, I've, I've said this to you before. I'll say it again. You need to be patient here. If you get this, that's great. But I know there are people out there that are really struggling with this. Not because I see them, but there always are. You would have to say, I'm going to let r equal n cubed, or whatever letter you want. This would become 2 times r squared, because n to the 6 is n cubed squared. And this is r plus 8r minus 42. You would take the 2 out. You would factor this. And I, I hope even those of you that want to use the r, you're starting to say, oh, yeah, I see what's going to happen here. The r, the r is simply going to become um, n cubed. So this factors into r plus 3, nope, r minus 3, r plus 7. And then you put the n cubed back in. And you get what we got before. So a couple of questions. Go ahead, Arianna. Um, are n equal to 0? Oh, yeah. And, and I think when you turn the page, there's one that says equal to 0 as well. I, don't, don't erase that. Rub it out, whatever you want to do. I did not mean to do that. I took some other document and I was editing it, but I forgot to remove the equals zero. We're not going to solve this. Okay? We're, we're not going to solve this being equal to zero, although you could, but not at this level. Okay, so was that what you were going to ask about, Seamus? Okay, yeah, don't worry about the equals zero. If it's there, ignore it. Um, Okay. Is this quadratic? Well, is the first exponent even? Yes. Is the second exponent half of the first? Yes. So again, I'm going to push it here and just say to you, let's go ahead and factor it. Can you take out a common factor? No. So this is trial and error. You know that whatever you put here and here has to multiply to give this. Now, please pay careful attention to this. So just stop writing for a second and just observe. I just said that these two yellow things have to multiply to give 5y to the 4. Can somebody explain why it cannot be, why it cannot be that. That multiplies to give 5y to the 4. Why is that not 
going to help us? Yeah, if I, I think I kind of heard you. We're going to need y squareds out of this, aren't we? So when I multiply my inner or my outer, how am I going to get y squareds out of that? And this is why you need to take the variables that are in the quadratic term and divvy them up evenly. This is why the exponent on this term is half the exponent on that term. So now, what do we put in the other two slots? I would guess 2 and 4, wouldn't you? I mean, it might be 1 and 8, but it's probably 2 and 4. I said 2 and 4 in that order, so I'm going to try this. If I multiply my outer, how many of you see right away it's not right? I multiply my outer and get 20 of these y squareds. My inner is 2y squareds. Well, how am I going to get 3? y squareds out of that? And the answer is I can't. So let's move the 2 around with the 4 and bump it out of the way. What do we have now? We have 10. Hmm. We have 10 y squared in the outer and 4 y squared in the inner. That's not going to give us 3. Wow, is it really going to be 8? Have we finally arrived at one where it's not the numbers that are closer together? And it's going to be 8 and 1. I believe the 8 has to go here and the 1 here and put a minus and a plus. If I FOIL this out, my outer term will be 5y squared and it will be negative. My inner will be positive 8y squared. This combines to give 3y squared, which is what I want to get, 3y squared. So are we done? Nope. y squared minus 1 is a difference of squares. You've got to keep your eyes peeled for that. So we have 5y squared plus 8, and then the y squared minus 1 is y plus 1, y minus 1. I, I think you get the idea. I, I mean, we could do the final example. Um, let's see, I, got, I crossed off the equals 0. Let's do it. It'll only take a couple minutes. I think you're getting the hang of it. I think you should use the R thing if you're having difficulty with these types of questions, where it's visually more assaulting on your brain. It's like you look at it and it's like, what? Changing what's in brackets to R makes it simpler. I think with these, 